Okay, so we got the uh, C Division Finals between Sam E and Haka 3. Um, each of these players won their respective divisions of the C Division of League. And then we had semifinals among the, the four different divisions and then won their semifinals match and are now facing off in finals. So whoever wins this is the best of the C Division. Let's see what we got here. So the only action is Lackeys, which is um, pretty unreliable as a Soul Village. Lackeys is a really strong card, but for example, not the sort of thing I think that you would want to build an Inventor Mega Turnaround or anything, because that's very action intensive. Uh, Lackeys is also only draw. Uh, so if you're trying to draw with Lackeys and then also use Lackeys as a village for uh, Inventor or other terminals, you'd run out pretty fast. Uh, you get Trashing with Moneylender and Raise and Amulet, and technically Trade Route, but that card's pretty bad. Um, hmm. Supplies is a good card. I think you probably play with like an inventor, but not like aiming to play a bunch of inventors per turn. Um, opening could be Moneylender Raise, um, Amulet Raise, Moneylender Amulet, something along those lines. Um, just get kind of thin. I think I want a fair number of supplies, and then um, start provincing. Supplies is basically just like treasury, but costing two. Because uh, when you when you boil it down, treasury is just like plus one card, plus one action, plus one coin. Supplies, more subtly, has the same sort of effect. It's plus one coin, um, and it doesn't say plus one action, but treasures don't cost an action in the first place. So a treasure is sort of the equivalent of an action card that has plus one action on it, because neither loses you an action. And then while it doesn't say plus card either, it also gives you a horse. And horses plus two cards plus one action, which is like on net plus one card. So supplies gives you a card that's plus one card, and single use. So supplies is very indirect, indirectly uh, akin to plus one card plus one action plus one coin, which makes it really good for two. I think it's often a great card to pick up. They both take inventor race. That's interesting. I think that's a pretty good opening as well. Um, slightly slower to get trashed, um, but you'll gain cards quicker. <laughs> so Sam E goes in for the Moneylender next. It's pretty reasonable. Haka prefers the Amulet. Also quite fine. Um, amulet trashes faster than Moneylender does because it trashes both the turning play and the next turn. Moneylender gives you some money. I think I prefer the amulet here uh, because I'm looking to buy cards that are mostly very cheap, namely supplies. So having that plus three coin spike is not super significant, um, but it's at least pretty close. Like you wouldn't be happy to buy, or you would be unhappy to buy treasury over supplies. It is, I think, slightly better. Um, although I was just describing them as very similar. The two marginal benefits Treasury has, of course, are firstly that uh, it top decks itself as long as you don't buy a victory card. Uh, so you see it somewhat more often than supplies. And then secondly, supplies, um, I would think about it as like, it's like a Treasury that, that comes with like a minus one card token the very first time you play it. Because um, the first time you play it, you're not getting the plus one card. And then the next turn you do when you get that horse in play. Um, whereas treasure, you get the, the plus card up front. And so it's kind of got the opposite of that ghost town um, effect, where your ghost town gains straight to your hand. And so you get like plus one card immediately. Whereas supplies, you get like minus one card immediately, and then plus one card every turn thereafter. And so with the long term, it evens out. Um, point being, just there's, there's marginal advantages to treasury here if you would just head five and could choose between either of them. <laughs> the fact that Sammy played the inventor there suggests that he was not going to play the lackeys at all, because obviously if you um, get both lackeys and inventor, it doesn't make any sense to play inventor first. You'd rather play the lackeys, see what you draw, and then um, decide whether or what to do with the inventor. For example, like let's say there was a raise in the top two cards. If you played inventor, then lackeys, you have to waste another villager to play the raise. But if you played lackeys, then you could play the raise, 
and then play the inventor, and you only lose one villager instead of two. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't find this, this kingdom to be the most uh, interesting. I don't think there's any huge grand strategy that you're building towards here. It's just like a combination of click on a bunch of the decent cards, and we'll see who chooses the the optimal medley of cards. See, I mean, you could very reasonably consider provincing here even. Uh, I'm not sure that you do, but like, if you're not trying to build, provincing when you hit eight is not out of the question. Something you could consider, um, probably more so as Hakka than as Sam E, is like a conquest or two is not bad early on. Like let's say Hakka plays Amulet one turn and then Inventor the next. The the duration Amulet could gain a silver on the following turn, then you could use Inventor for silver, then you could buy Conquest, and then you'd have um, four silver in your deck and four victory points to show for it. Uh, which is a nice way to add some economy while also still building. Obviously in, a, in decks like this that are not super strong, um, silvers is, are not a bad card to add. It's interesting that Hakka is adding so many inventors. I'm kind of skeptical of this. Maybe there is something interesting to be had here after all. We'll see if this um, mass inventor play pays off. I don't think it will. I think that uh, the the villa situation is just too tight. It looks like Hakka is going to try. I'm not sure if that was the plan all along. Or maybe Hakka saw Sam E take the very early province and said, all right, well, Sam E is going straight for um, provinces. I don't need to worry about him contesting the inventor super much. So I'll have an easier time getting um, the lion's share of the inventors and lackeys. Now, with that in mind, as Sam E, I would think that most of my inventor gains from here on out should probably just be lackeys. If my opponent's already committing pretty heavily to mass inventors, um, then certainly I would not mind denying villages because that deck is going to be very village intensive. Um, I mean, not to say that you wouldn't want lackeys anyway because lackeys is a pretty good card, but uh, even more so than usual, I think. I would be taking lackeys from here on out of Sammy. which Sam E does. And this looks like another province here. Demon Tractor Copper. Huh. I don't understand why he trashed the rays. That doesn't make sense to me. I'm just trash a copper and buy province. There's no value in drawing on there. I guess maybe he was hoping to find the money lender. Um, and maybe if yeah, I'm not sure. Because like the value of money lender is just that it trashes the copper. You don't need extra money, so why not just trash the copper with raise? That I, I don't follow that decision at all. In any case, I don't I don't think I believe in Hakka's deck. Um, Sammy's already at two provinces. So I'd say Hakka's roughly got three to four turns to make this work. Probably four turns. I think five provinces is, is probably not safe for Sam E. Because uh, the inventor thing does gain a bunch of um, duchies along the way. That being said, Sam E will never ever miss province here. Because even on a turn where he doesn't hit eight, he can just salt the earth and absolutely should. That brings the game to a close faster. Alright, 
we're coming down to the wire here. I'm not sure as Hakka how much you even try to have a full turn here on these close to final turns. Because like drawing all the way through your deck is going to cost you a bunch of villagers, which is probably the thing most short supply here. Like maybe you just trash a copper and take in a lackeys and then end your turn. I don't know. Trash a lackeys also makes sense. You could like take the raise, trash copper now. Take lackeys. And then play. We can't buy anything, I don't think. If you trash copper and gain lackeys, you have no money. And everything still costs one. Maybe you could justify playing both adventures. Maybe you trash copper, play inventor, gain inventor, play inventor, gain something, buy a raise. I'm not sure. Opts not to. Totally reasonable. Now the issue for Hakka, I think, is... Like there's there's nothing more your deck can do except for try to go off because everything you do from here on out is going to cost you villagers, which is just going to make that mega turn harder and harder and harder. Um, so like, this might just be the turn that Haka goes for it. If they don't go for it, I'm not sure what, the, what else they're doing. Like you're not playing multiple adventures and multiple lackeys unless you're trying to go for the mega turn because you're cutting into your um, now an entirely finite supply of um, villagers. <laughs> Sam E actually has an awkward choice here. I think you've got to draw on with the lackeys and hope to find a treasure. Because what you really want to, you don't want to not hit four. Four is the significant number here for Sam E. Um, you want to keep salting the provinces. Ooh, I, I don't like this choice. He's deciding to uh, play the inventor, which guarantees you don't hit province this turn. I'm not totally sure what the contents of that deck are, but the, the odds of finding at least one copper or supplies don't seem like they could be that bad. It is, of course, possible, perhaps, that you know, Sammy knew exactly what the bottom card was and knew it wasn't a copper or supplies, which then reduces the chances of hitting four. Maybe makes it not worth it. <laughs> All right, we'll see if Hawkeye goes for it here. He's thinking about it. You gotta think about it at the start of the turn, because you're either fully committing or not at all. But I'm I'm just not totally maybe he's thinking about whether he needs more inventors for the turn to fully go off. Which honestly he might he's only got five right now. Yeah, five feels like it might be too few. I just I so don't believe in this deck. He's only got eight total villagers. And doing this thing is going to require playing, like, six-plus inventors while also playing lackeys to draw them. I don't know where he's getting all those actions from. I'm not a believer. Taking raise. I don't know what Awa is. I don't I don't think inventor lackeys is is a thing. Like if you have other villagers, like or villages, if you throw in like a wandering minstrel or something, inventor lackeys is totally a thing. But as like a self sufficient combo, I think the lackeys just run out way too fast.
Like, Sam E here is actually not being particularly fast at emptying the provinces at all. Um, I think the, the, the problem Hawkeye is facing is his own deck. Uh, he, he just built a deck that he can't, can't do anything. Um... If there's a turn to go for it, surely it's got to be this one, right? You got three races in hand. Alright, trash in the lackeys. Maybe this is not the turn to go for it. Each time you play raise and trash something, you're reducing your hand size because you put one card in hand, but you spent both the raise and the card you trash. Raise trashing itself is hand size neutral. So the fact that Haka is trashing other stuff with the raises suggests he's delaying this one more turn. Which, I mean, again, like, it's not like Sammy is imminently threatening any provinces here or anything. So I'm not even sure time is the real limitation. Uh, this is eight. I think you just stop here, Sammy, and don't play the raise. Just trash the copper with moneylender by province. Truly province, right? Maybe he's contemplating conquest or something? So... Yeah, okay, it takes province. So if Hawkeye wants four provinces, you need to play one inventor to reduce provinces down to seven, then a second to bring it down to six, then a third to bring it down to five, then a fourth to bring it down to four, and then every inventor from the fifth inventor on will be able to gain provinces. Problem is, Hawkeye's only got five <laughs> inventors. So even if he manages to play every single inventor in his deck right now, he'll get... I don't know, like one estate, then three duchies, then a province, and maybe you can afford to buy a province. So he's starting to do like double province, triple duchy estate. And then where does his deck go? It's full of adventures he can't play and green cards. Uh, I'm pretty, I mean, maybe, maybe he'll pull off some major combo here and prove me wrong. But I'm pretty sure Haka has just hoist himself by his own petard. I mean, I like Psycho's idea as much as anything. Um, that being said, I don't think anything wins. So with seven inventors, what can he do? If he has... Uh, he, that doesn't bring him to seven inventors. That just brings him to six. So with six inventors, he can gain two provinces, maybe conceivably buy a province if he has two money. I'm not even sure he has two money in his deck, but let's assume that he, that he can get two money. Then he's starting to do triple province plus triple duchy 
plus a state. So that's 18, 27, 28 points. That's not even enough to be, like if, if Sam E just provinces one more time, then um, that's not even enough. In fact, if Sammy even salts the earth here, I think that would just be a tie for Haka. Um, yeah, that that was a great lackey's draw. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Province here seals the deal. Now even if Haka completely goes off, plays all of his adventures, and somehow has enough money for a province, he's still losing. Three provinces is 18, three more duchies brings it to 27, uh, and a state brings it to 28. Um, not sure what else you're doing. <laughs> Inventor conquest mega turn <laughs> for like eight points. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, if you're not doing it now, I don't know when you're doing it. He's got to play the raise, trash the supplies. Um, maybe not. I don't, I don't know. If, does Haka have two supplies in total in there? Like, theoretically, it, it would seem perhaps significant for Haka to keep two money around. Because if he plays six inventors, the provinces will cost two. So maybe you keep the supplies on the ground that if you find one more supplies and all your inventors... That'll be enough to buy province. Everything just seems super losing, though. So you take the supplies, play the lackeys. Uh, he could here if he draws both adventures. Right? You just play lackeys, draw both adventures, and you have exactly enough villagers to do everything your deck planned to do, and then realize it was still insufficient. I'm not sure what other card is down there. My guess is it's two adventures and a lackeys. And if you draw the lackeys, you're real sad. Because then even if you play the lackeys and draw the last inventor, you're then you're one villager short. I think Lackeys gets overhyped a little bit. Like, it is a really strong card. For for two coins, it's easily one of the best two costs. And generally, in any kingdom where it's around, you, you kind of just click it a lot. But I don't think it's the sort of thing where you can use Lackeys as the main draw and action of your entire deck for some uh, terminal action card heavy strategy. Uh, it does run out. <laughs> and then it becomes pretty bad. I mean, I'm not sure what Hawkeye's thinking about. He's already kind of committed here. You're not waiting and taking another turn with one less villager. You just play this lackeys and pray, right? What else could you be doing? I mean, then again, even if you play this lackeys, like, again, what is your deck even... This is just lost. <laughs> like, if you, even if you find both inventors, you play all the inventors, you're still not enough points. It's not enough time to pivot to like money by inventing a bunch of silvers or anything. Sammy's deck is not crapped out nearly that badly, and Salt the Earth is around. Oh, 
All right, he bottom decked Inventor. Um, so he can't play them all. Yeah, that seems like a reasonable resign. All right, game one to Sam E. Who's also player one, to be fair. Although I don't, like, I don't think it was the, the player one advantage here. The, the speed at which Sam E played his deck mattered next to zero. It was really just Haka versus Haka there, um, fighting a losing battle of villagers. Well, this looks unpleasant. Uh, so we got Ghost Ship and Mountebank. Uh, and the trashing is just Dismantle and Salvager. <laughs> just not nearly fast enough to deal with Mountebank. Um, and we got good draw and actions with Hostelry, Paddock, and Werewolf. Those are all good enough, but it's, it feels like it's going to be a lot of pain. Plus, you can buy a mission frequently to get in, like, extra Mountebank attacks. Hmm. 5-2. I would think first five is Mountebank. Um, probably better than Ghost Ship for starting up. Uh, Haka agrees. Mountebank Seller seems real strong. That was interesting. Turn three... Um, I think there's a very good argument as Haka for just playing the seller and discarding three coppers. You're very unlikely to still hit five, but you cycle through your deck a lot and trigger a shuffle that has your mounted bank in it. Um, Haka instead opted for um, playing the mounted bank and not playing the seller, which guarantees you get a five cost at the expense of um, having a worse next turn. In any case, they both now have Mount Bank and Ghost Ship, which are the two key cards here. But I think Haka has played the Mount Bank a bunch more times. Let's see. H plays on Mount Bank. Maybe not a bunch more times, just one more time. Um, so not super significant, but Haka does seem to be in the lead. Um, mission here. Pilgrimage over mission is rather surprising to me. Um, I mean, it's certainly not bad or anything. I'll get a, a great buy this turn. But, like, if you mission, you can buy Pilgrimage anyway. As long as you hit four, which is reasonably likely. Um, I feel like buying... Pilgrimage feels like an error. Like, mission is just pilgrimage plus a lot of bonus cycling. Um, in any case, it was still sufficient. All right, what do we have here? So you got uh, Curse Village as the village. You got um, draw with Curse Village, of course, or any action with Way of the Otter, or Hunting Grounds. Not that Curse Village and Hunting Grounds play particularly well together. Um, you can trash with Scrap can kind of trash with Miser or Trade Route. Um, the engine looks a little bit awkward here, but um, Cursed Village Miser could be a thing. Um, one advantage of it is that it's pretty resilient to militia attacks. Um, Marauder might be worth getting. None of the cards here are particularly good at trashing ruins. Like Miser obviously can't. And then Scrap and Trade Route. Well, Trade Route just sucks all, all the time. And the Scrap is not great when you're trashing zero cost cards. Stonemason as well actually could trash, but again, also not great at trashing ruin, so Marauder might be worth it. Um, if you don't do the, the Cursed Village Miser thing, you could also just play with like Guildhall even. Like what about like Marauder and Guildhall? And then maybe like adding Cellars and Tunnels? Is that a thing? I, I mean, that might be a thing. Um... Let's see what they're doing. So, Sam E opens with Cursed Village Cellar. Interesting. Hmm. I would think if you have 5-2 and you click Cursed Village, that signifies that you're definitely going for the Cursed Village engine rather than the Guildhall assortment of treasures. 
Um, otherwise, you just buy Guildhall outright. Um, Haka opens with Marauder Scrap. Okay, um, that seems fine. We'll just say Marauder seems like a reasonable attack here. Yeah, so Sammy is definitely doing the miser stuff. The um, the hex that that Sam got, the trash and estate gain a curse, is honestly like like a pretty good hex to get all things considered. Uh, on the one hand, turning an estate into a curse is like minus two victory points, so it's kind of akin to um, to misery or miserable, the, the hex that gives you um, minus two points. Um, but it has the advantage of discarding an estate off the top of your deck. It, of course, also has the disadvantage that um, when you eventually get around to trashing it, trashing a curse is not as easy as trashing an estate in this kingdom, because scrap can trash estates better than curses. Um, but it doesn't seem like the worst text to get. So Haka deciding what to get um, with the scrap, or no, they've already decided that. They're just deciding what to buy. Also going into Miser. So it is, it is not at all common to see Miser be any good. And it's not even like it's particularly good here. I think it's just, it's winning out by virtue of nothing else looking amazing. Um, general problem with Miser, it's, it's super slow to start. Like the first few turns you're playing it, and by few I mean like first seven turns or so. It's basically just like a terminal copper trasher, which is really bad, it's like trade route level bad. Um, and then eventually it gets really strong. Um, but the the sort of short term decline in deck quality um, that you're going to have relative to pretty much any other trasher usually is too significant. Um, that being said, it's got a lot of things here that work in its favor. You got cursed villages, your best draw, um, which naturally inclines you towards um, an action based payload because cursed village and treasures don't um, jive well together. And there's not like a whole lot of great action based payload here. Militia and trade route and scrap are all pretty mediocre in that regard. Um, secondly, there's not any other particularly better ways of trashing copper. Like, trashing copper with Miser is about as equivalent as trashing with Scrap, Trade Root, or Stonemason. Um, and then just the, the lack of, like, really strong alternatives, um, in general makes Miser, um, look better. In the sense that, like, the lack of alternatives makes anything look better. Still not totally sure that it's like the best. Like I, I wouldn't be surprised if these decks are just like slow enough that some guild hall tunnel thing um, just outpaces them. I could easily see like just cellar tunnel and guild hall putting away enough provinces quickly enough to that the miser just doesn't catch up. Um, that being said, I actually don't have a great sense of who's in the lead right now. Um, so Sam's already got two coppers on the tavern mat. Tahaka's also two at this point. So maybe they're pretty even. Um, Haka's only given out one ruins so far with that Marauder that they opened with. Did it just bottom deck or something? Oh, I saw it turn four. <laughs> I'm not sure what that bottom card is. If it's a copper, um, then I definitely I would draw it. And actually, hmm, this is a bit of a tough decision. Is is Sammy? The card I really would like to get here is another cursed village. You know your opponent's got militia, and militia hurts a lot with no cursed village in hand, and is actively friendly with a cursed village in hand. So I want to make sure my deck's full of um, cursed villages as soon as possible. Um, that being said, there's no good way on that turn to both buy a cursed village and also play the miser. And passing up on a miser play is pretty significant. 
So Sam E elected to just play the miser, and I think that's pretty reasonable. The downside, of course, is this hand is going to get attacked with militia, and it's going to hurt a ton. Um, basically, going to kill the turn because, um, like, they could have cellared away two cards to draw one, but now they can't. I think you actually keep the um, the ruined library here as Sam E. Um, like, you can trash the scrap, uh, you can trash the estate later with scrap non terminally on a turn where you need the extra actions. Um, and given this turn's not going to do anything else anyway, might as well spend it just trashing the ruined library, which is a little bit harder to get rid of. Uh, I guess a, a, a reasonable but more risky alternative is just to discard two whatevers and then with your three card hand leave seller and two other cards and then sell them away and try to draw two more. And then if your Cursed Village is in the top two cards, then you can um, still have a full turn. It looks like they're going to do something like that. Maybe they're taking card action here and then you could sell out of the Miser and try to draw on and pray your Cursed Village is on top. They're just going to take the money. Tunnel. That's not what I expected. Not at all. Um... Maybe the idea here is, like, I don't think they're they're doing the tunnel guilt hall thing I was describing earlier. This would be way too uh, indirect way to get to that um, by starting with Chris Village and Miser. My guess is maybe the idea is just militia attack will activate the tunnel and seller can as well, and then you can stonemason the golds into two Chris Villages at a time, and that'll be a quick way to get Chris Villages into your deck. I can see that. Tunnel is certainly not something I was considering for this this kingdom, though. Or not for this kingdom, for this deck. Um, always nice to get the uh, the discard attacks from buying Chris Village, because it pretty much never hurts. Um, like, those are the ones you really are rooting to, to, to get. So, uh, Sam E gets Aku Cheed. Um, I don't, I don't know if top decking two coppers is particularly bad. It probably hurts a bit. Ho ho ho! That's a nice militia. Gains the gold. Helps the cursed village draw two more than it would have otherwise. Honestly, as Haka, I would strongly consider scrapping that militia. Because it is doing less than nothing for you. I mean, it is money, I guess. At the very least, it has that to its credit. But it's not a good source of money. Uh, it is currently one nothing in Sam E's favor. Don't know if you're listening. It's one one. Am I? Oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, I I knew that. I I have been paying close attention to this match. I swear. Um... <laughs> I the, the the ghost ship mountebank game just happened so fast I totally forgot about it yeah it's it's one all um, there was there was one game that that played out for a nice long time and the one game where well mountebank happened and then Sammy just resigned very quickly um, well Hawkeye beat me so I guess I have to root for him then by this the same logic. Um, I think that negates Johnson's reading. Uh, 
Hmm. I don't really have any knowledge of, of your ability to be a fanboy, but I, I wouldn't consider myself exceptional in that regard, so I'll take your word for it. Uh, what's Sam E got down there? A gold, I think, and a stonemason, unless they've trashed them already. So I think you're trying to draw that. Discard three cards here. Um, draw a golden stonemason, and then turn that into two cursed villages and kill the ruined library. That's my thought, at least. I could also be wrong about the contents of Sam E's deck. Um, no, the, the gold's definitely down there. Pretty sure this, there's also a stonemason down there. Although it's possible he's already trashed his. But I'm pretty sure there's a gold in the stonemason down there, in which case you just discard tunnel copper copper, stonemason gold, and the two cursed villages, trash ruin library. Seems like a good play. Don't know what the final card is. Oh, it is not a stonemason. Why does he even have the tunnel? If, why does he even have the tunnel if he's gotten rid of his stonemasons? I thought that the purpose of the the tunnel was to get golds to stonemason them. Um, so now you just stonemason for two cursed villages. It's actually kind of a shame that Sam E didn't have enough cards in hand for the discard attack to hit, because <laughs> then he could have discarded the tunnel anyway. I'm actually not even sure that he wants a bunch of gold in his deck, as opposed to just like one or two. Because um, the main value of gold here is not to play it, it's to trash it. Another friendly militia likely incoming. Uh, is that bottom card a scrap? I don't know. If it is, I would strongly consider drawing it and trashing the militia. Yeah, it was definitely a scrap at the bottom. I think you could have discarded like spoilers or something, drawn the scrap, and then trashed militia and still um, played both misers. Um, Sam E, I would assume, is trashing the silver here. Yep. Um, obviously, you'd rather be trashing a ruined market, but you can't do that and still play Cursed Village. Um, so action, horse, and what did he take? Coin. Action, horse, coin seems totally fine. Um, I'd be kind of inclined to just pitch all of this and make sure you find your cursed village. Not sure if you take the gold off of it or not. Yeah, we're, we're very much getting into pilot territory here with like stonemasons, misers, and scraps all being low. Tunnel as well is a nice card to pile on because it comes with a lot of points. I don't think that's a realistic possibility this turn, but it's something to keep an eye out for. Um, between stonemasons in your deck and stonemasons in the supply, it's very easy to empty a lot of cards very fast with stonemason. Like you trash a gold, the two misers, and then you stonemason for two misers and stonemason again for three more stonemasons and all of a sudden piles are super duper low. I think I think the Marauder has, has paid off despite the um the existence of Way of the Otter. That's my impression at least. Um, I don't think Marauder was the issue here. I mean, it's, it's possible that it didn't. I mean, maybe um, a different opening could have been stronger. Um, let's see. So, is this a win? Um, what pilots are you looking at? Stonemason Miser? 
So you could trash gold into two misers, and then you've got 11 money and three buys. Or maybe you're looking at it differently than I am. Where's 16 coming from? Are you trashing tunnel into two coppers and then draw? Okay, so let's see. So tunnel to two stone masons. Um, okay, he's doing it differently. Maybe this line also works. Yeah, so my, this is my first intuition to look at. Um, I'm not sure if this works, but it might. Um, so you need six money to empty misers, then four more for stonemasons, plus two. This is one coin short, right? Am I miscounting? Well, that doesn't win. Yeah, I think that was one, one coin short. So you, you play the ruined market, uh, you would need six money to empty one stonemason and two misers, then four more to empty three more stonemasons. That's ten, and that would leave one stonemason left in the pile, uh, which would require three buys and twelve. He had three buys and eleven. So the other line that was being considered was trash tunnel into two stonemasons. Then you would need uh, twelve to empty misers, plus two more to empty the last stonemason. Yeah, that would have worked. Yeah. So the the tunnel into stonemason line does seem like it worked. Because um, you, you end up with 14 and 3 buys instead of 11 and 3 buys if you don't trash the gold. So yeah, there was a missed win there. I think he might have jumped the gun a little bit there. Um... Like he didn't spend enough time thinking to even suggest that he was like looking for a pileout and didn't find it. I think he just maybe didn't have pileouts on the mind there. And he's just like, I'm gonna score a bit. All right, so now Haka, uh, I highly doubt Haka can win this turn. Uh, maybe could pile, but cannot pile and do uh, 11 points. I think pitch everything but a miser here. Oh, that's a very good point from DZ. Haka is diluted, <laughs> which makes it very hard to pile, um, given that the pile's reaction cards. Um, yeah, so my guess is the um, the pile that will be on the table again for Sammy this turn. So he's probably going to draw. Okay, so Hawkeye's finally got seven coppers on the mat. I would assume this is just two provinces, especially given that you can't even contemplate buying action cards. Do you get rid of the spoils? I think the answer is yes. Um, you have all the money in the world now with your misers. Um, so money is not an, uh, an issue. And you just rather be able to draw consistently. So I'd play the spoils even though you don't need to for the two provinces just to get out of the deck. Um, the thing Haka is now missing is plus buy, uh, looks like. Because he's only got the one scrap. And that's kind of an issue. Because you've got enough money that you really want at least three buys. Like, Haka has enough money for Triple Province here. Um, and if he weren't diluted, I'd be buying, like, single province and then scrap, maybe. Um, even then, maybe you just have to buy double province to protect from the pileup. Um, but no matter how you slice it, the inability to get a third buy here is going to be a bit of an issue. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if Sam E can still pile out here. Mises are lower than they were. Um, he does have to take a duchy though on top of piling. Um, but I'm confident that like with an ideal draw, um, he can pile. I'm not sure how much deviation from the ideal is allowable here. And these decks are obviously a little bit rickety. Um, pitch everything but the miser. Everything but a scrap. That works fine too. 
think I'm trashing the ruined library here over the copper. Okay, this looks like it doesn't do it. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I'm not seeing plus buy, which is the big limitation. So I think as Sam E, you probably just set aside a copper and then trash a copper. So Miser to Scraps. Um, hmm. I mean, on the one hand, Scraps a good card to have in your deck. On the other hand, you're you're taking um, two scraps and two coppers, essentially, in exchange for the miser. Um, oh, I like that play. Um, yeah, I like this idea a lot. Um, maybe there's a win now? Mm, he still looks one by short. Because you can empty misers, no, two by short, two by short. Um, you can empty misers and stonemasons in three buys. Uh, but you need a fourth buy to score. Uh, that's a good question. The answer might be yes. Good old Scarp to save the day. Yeah, this hand is somewhat undesirable. Maybe pitching wasn't as, as nice it looked after all. Um, this was a, a horrendous shuffle to trigger. Now, that being said, horrendous shuffle here is still single provincing. Uh, like, Sam E could just play the miser, do nothing else, and buy province. And be totally fine. I don't know about totally fine. Haka is not um, too far behind. Now, if Haka is paying attention, he might know that this is a bit of a dead turn for Sam E, and then play around that. In fact, um, we might figure out whether Haka knows Sammy's hand kind of sucks based on whether he scraps this militia or not. Because I think if you're Haka and you know Sammy has seen all of his cursed villages and doesn't have one in hand, you might reasonably consider just playing the militia. Um, whereas if you're Haka and don't have any uh, info about Sam's hand, you might strongly consider scrapping this militia. Because in a hand with cursed village, the militia is really helpful for Sammy. Um, So I'm kind of inclined to say whether Haka chooses to scrap this militia over the silver will indicate whether Haka is clued into Sam's hand sucking. I mean, maybe you also just, you, you could just choose to scrap silver anyway on the grounds that being able to play both scrap and militia reduces your hand size one further than scrapping militia and therefore draws one more card. So maybe you just scrap the silver either way. But I've, I've been a fan of scrapping this militia for a while now. I don't think it's a good card in the deck. It was probably fine at the beginning. Like the first few turns you play it, it might hurt when they don't reliably have a Chris Village. But once their deck's full of Chris Villages, the militia starts to look pretty bad. I assume this is what Hawkeye's thinking about right now. Like, the, the things that are on your mind right now are scrapping silver and scrapping militia. Um, I mean, maybe you could even justify scrapping the horse. Um, um, a minion pawn's got a point. Maybe Haka is trying to consider whether there's enough money in his deck to triple. Um, so, for example, maybe you think that, oh, I've got like 22 right now, so I scrap horse. Um, 
and Johnson does have a pretty good counter argument, which is Hawkeye still has not added plus buy, um, and therefore cannot triple. Triple anything. Couldn't even triple ruins here. Actually, maybe he has a scrap left, or a, a stone mason left. Maybe he can't triple ruins. Um, no masons? All right, yeah. Yeah, he can't triple anything here except silver. Um, I find it weird that he played the Cursed Village before the scrap, but I guess he knew he was going to draw either way. All right, so you got 16. These last two misers doing nothing for you. That's a loss. Um, I think Haka actually had a pretty reasonable play here. I think Haka correctly identified that Sam E's hand was a dud, um, but didn't realize that even a dud hand here um, is actually um, still a single province for Sam. Um, But yeah, playing around it slightly better, I think, probably would have been better. Like, province and duchy, and then playing a double province next turn. <laughs> yeah, Hawkeye did manage to choose the the one worst losing line. Um, single province in anything would win. All right, what have we here? Um, I'm not sure if nothing was winning because Hawkeye still has this big plus buy limitation. I think Hawkeye taking one province and literally anything else would win um so anyways this kingdom so we've got or not even one province and anything else one province or one scrap and anything else like you could just take a scrap and then triple province next turn and i keep saying I'll look at this kingdom i'm actually going to do it now we've got plenty of villages with village green and hostery um your draw is going to be torturer uh, you can trash with Monastery. Monastery Hostry is a little bit nice because you can get extra cards with horses. Um, that being said, it's not like amazing synergy because you're also discarding the coppers. Um, you get plus buy with Market. Um, also Wine Merchant, although my guess is you don't need Wine Merchants that badly here. Maybe you get Wine Merchants. Um, Caravan Guard Way of the Rat is kind of interesting. I think that'd actually be a really nice interaction. Rat, rat, caravan guard would be a really nice interaction if the discard attack were anything except torturer. Like, what if they played like a militia or a ghost ship on you? You could react caravan guard, discard one of their copper, and then you've reduced your hand size down to three anyway, but gotten a free caravan guard out of it. The problem is, torturer, unlike basically any other discard attack, doesn't say like discard down to three. It says discard two cards. So if you did the, the fancy little caravan rat thing, and then uh, um, got torture attacked, you'd still have to discard two more down to one or take a curse. Um, in any case, torture is gonna hurt a bit here, but monastery I think is good enough trashing that it won't be like the make or break thing. You're still gonna get torture for draw though. So Haka takes double silver, Sammy takes silver village green. Um, both of those are kind of interesting to me. Um, so double silver signifies that Hakka just really wants uh, torture. It's really fast, I think, um, which makes sense. Uh, obviously, torture is a good card here. Um, the village green. I don't know. I mean, village green sort of is a nice soft counter to torture because it's like a card that doesn't get discarded. But, I mean, it's still a village in the opening. 
I'm not convinced that's really doing enough to justify its existence in Sammy's deck. I could even see, like, like opening Silver Hostelry maybe is better. Like, you could Rat Hostelry and then take some horses or something. I don't think I fully follow the Village Green choice. Sammy really likes villages. Sammy likes the Village Rush. Um... I think I'm I'm a little skeptical of this. We'll see if it pays off. Like the the village green best case scenario does shut down the torture attack entirely. Like if you've got two village greens in hand, you can discard two village greens, um, and then redraw two more cards. But even if you've done that, like best case scenario of having two village greens versus the torture. They've still got a smithy, and you've got two villages. I think I'd rather have a smithy right now than two villages. A um, little bit of a sad draw for Haka here, drawing both hostelries dead. Um, I think you just buy another hostelry here and take four horses. Four horses just seems too good to pass up. Um, apocalyptic in strength, in fact. Um, that being said, the other thing worth considering is just taking plus buy now, um, like buying a market. I think those are the only two things I would consider. Maybe Wine Merchant, because um, it's also plus buy. You've got the villages. Um, but I think, like, Hostry is number one choice. Market number two. Wine Merchant number three. I don't think anything else is on the table. Torturer. Okay. Just once more draw. I'm not I'm not at all convinced of that, I don't think. Like in the short term, the hostery thing gets you a lot more draw. And then you could like wrap the torturer to get another torturer. I don't know. I mean, like obviously torture is not a bad card. But it didn't feel like the thing to buy there. They are, they are drawing a lot of villages dead. Haka drawing two uh, hostries dead. Sammy drawing two village greens dead. Um, <laughs> Haka buying a vagrant just to treasure copper. Makes sense. I think in a situation like this, like Hakka's Hand, where you've got a Vagrant and one other cantrip card, I think it tends to be better to lead with the Vagrant rather than lead with the Hostery. Because if, like, like the, the card you're really trying to get to is Torturer here for the draw. So if, if the Torturer is like the, the top card in your deck, you draw it either way. If it's the second card in your deck, you draw it either way. But there's this scenario where the Torturer is the third card in your deck, and maybe like a State or a Curse or something. I don't think it's a Curse, but like. A card that Vagrant can draw is like the second card in your deck. And so if you play the, the Vagrant first, um, then you you avoid a dead turn in the scenario where your deck is like Copper Estate Torture or something like that. Whereas like Hostelry followed by Vagrant will um, kick off your turn and draw better if your hand is like Copper Torturer Estate or Torturer Copper Estate. But in those scenarios, you're going to draw either way. And so the, the one extra draw, while nice, is not the, the make or break of having a, a full turn. And so I think if your goal is to have a full turn, Vagrant first is good. Um, I think that's the opposite of, like, if you had uh, Herald or Patrician or a card that draws you, like, good cards rather than bad cards, then I think you often want to play the, the Vanilla Cantrip first and then the Herald or Patrician second. Um, because then that card potentially draws you a torturer that's three from the top of your deck instead of um, an estate that is. Um, um, yeah, basically what Miskun's saying in the, in the chat is the same thing I'm saying. Is like, if it's drawing you a bad card, play it early on the hopes that you get the bad card out of the way and find your good card. If it's a, um, if it searches for good cards, then you play it last to increase the search space of potentially finding that good card by one. I have now sufficiently distracted myself from the main game. Apparently something Sam E. did was questionable, but ultimately made sense, is what I'm gathering from the chat. 
Um, Ah, uh, yeah, that that does seem like a clear improvement on not taking two horses for free. <laughs> no one's got uh, plus buy yet. I think that's all right here. Because if you've got surplus coppers, what you can do is um, rat a hostelry and then discard those extra coppers for horses. Um, <coughs> so you can you can live longer on one buy um, while still making full use of your money. Um, but certainly the the time where you need plus buy is going to approach pretty soon. With with how many villages they have, honestly, wine merchant is starting to look not bad. Just because you've got so much action that um, you can probably support a wine merchant payload. Um, in the abstract, though, market is certainly the better plus buy source than wine merchant is. Seven. Uh, you could buy hostelry here and trash a ton of cards. Could buy plus buy here. It takes the plus buy. <laughs> Two village greens in the starting hand is kind of nice. Three village greens now because <laughs> um, of the caravan guard. You know, as Sammy, you could reasonably consider um, playing the village green this turn rather than next turn in response to the torturer attack there. Um, if you play the village green immediately on your opponent's turn, the downside is you're not getting the actions. And you're, you're like, I guess, technically getting the actions, but on your opponent's turn when you can't use them. Um, and so normally the default is you get attacked, um, you play the village green with the next turn option, and then it plays at the start of your turn and you get plus one card and plus two actions. Um, the argument for, I think, playing the village green immediately with the, the this turn option, even on your opponent's turn, is it draws you the card immediately, um, which then gives you more flexibility in what you discard to torture. Um, like you could draw something, like another junk card, and then potentially, or potentially like another village green even, and discard that, something like that, might be worth, worth considering. Uh, the second benefit is the village green goes uh, directly back in your deck. And so, like, theoretically, let's say you wanted to, to wave the rat the village green, you could um, react it immediately so it goes back into your deck at the end of your opponent's turn and then play it again later. Not, not that I think that was an obvious choice, but I think it's worth considering. As Haka, I would seriously consider... Um, oh, I was gonna say buy a hostelry, but he's um, in the middle of ratting a hostelry, which achieves the same goal. In any case, I was gonna say take a bunch of horses so you can trash all this junk. Um, yeah, I like this. Clearing out all the junk and adding plus buy. I'm not sure who's in the lead here. They feel pretty similar. Haka's got extra draw. Um, but Sammy will be the first one to make use of this wine merchant. I think Haka is in the lead. Sammy's got a little bit more junk. With a good turn here, um, Sammy might be able to equalize that, though. Like, the overdraw is pretty good because you can do, like, way of the rat shenanigans. Uh, so having extra draw here is nice. Like you draw your wine merchant, you weigh the rat, the way of the rat wine merchant. That was hard, uh, and then draw the new wine merchant and play that. That sort of thing. I don't think Sammy has quite enough draw to do that. Um, what's down this discard that he's drawing into? Is there anything other than the silver down there? 
Um, I think it might just be the silver because everything else that was discarded was a village green. I mean, you might nonetheless consider it as next turning village green for safety. Um, that was a little bit questionable, I think. You only had a one-third chance of redrawing the wine merchant. Hmm. See, I don't think I like that. I mean, it's not it's not necessarily terrible, because like you would have had two buys and now you have one buy, but you did gain a wine merchant anyway, which is like an extra buy. But I don't I don't like it. <laughs> Okay, yeah, <laughs> now this is making it look pretty terrible. Um, yeah. Um. That might have been a bit of an unnecessary risk from Sam E. Yeah, so now Hawkeye, I think, is firmly in the lead. Wrap the wine merchant, redraw it. I think you can even wrap the wine merchant a second time here and still be fine. Like play horse, wrap wine merchant, play hostelry, play torturer, play wine merchant. Um, and then I'd be looking to trash all of my coppers this turn. And then you have a nice thin deck full of wine merchants. Rat torturer is also, I think, a reasonable choice. You could wrap the horse. For context, um, using way of the rat on horse doesn't actually work. Um, actually, does it? I don't think it does. I'm pretty sure because horse is in a not in the supply pile, you can't actually gain it by way of the ratting it. Um, in any case, obviously, don't do that. Rat hostery. That is not what I anticipated. Does this perhaps allow you one more total way of the rat? Maybe maybe he countered it up and has, has realized this is enough draw to be able to also way of the rat something else. Um, we'll find out. Yeah, this, this works out fine. This works out fine. He's basically just got a free hostel right here. I like that. Um, I mean, the hostel is just like totally free, right? Oh, no, because he only got one wine merchant instead of two. This doesn't actually net you more. Um, yeah, I was thinking it was just like a free hostelry, but the, the thing you pass up on is either getting two wine merchants or a torturer and a wine merchant. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually not convinced this is better. Um, I think I would rather add like a torture and a wine merchant or two wine merchants or whatever. And then you can buy the hostelry and take the, the horses if you need to. It still seems all right. Like, hostelry's not a bad card. Um, sorry. I'm... You can't monetary the discarded coppers. That's true. Um, so what do you buy here? You're gonna have a clean deck, so I don't think you need any more draw. I think I might consider like a village green and I don't know, a market, a wine merchant. Yeah, village green wine merchant sounds fine to me. Your deck's about to be super thin, and so the thing I'm looking to do next turn is um, draw my deck and then do a bunch of Way of the Rat stuff. So I think I want extra villages because um, you'll need a lot of actions to do lots of wine merchant stuff. I don't think you need extra draw yet because I think if you trash just like, never mind, I was going to say trash all these coppers and curses, then you'll have plenty of overdraw anyway. Um...
This doesn't make much sense to me. So Hawkeye could have trashed those coppers for free. It seems he's decided having a copper and a horse is better than just not having a copper at all. Which, I mean, maybe makes sense. You need some number of treasures to be targets for your your way of the rat. You're going to draw anyway. Maybe having a few coppers isn't the worst. I would have just as soon trashed them and used the silvers as the, the rat targets, though. Um, nonetheless, with a turn like this from Sammy, I think the um, the game is very much Hakka's. Village Green strikes again. That's interesting to me that Sammy took a curse there while still having a Village Green in hand. Um, I guess it makes sense. If you're confident Hakka's going to play rather than not play that last Torturer, you'd rather discard Village Green and Curse rather than discard Village Green Copper and take a Curse. Um... Wait, no, that d it doesn't make sense. It definitely does not make sense. There's only one Curse left. He could have just... discard... Oh, wait, I'm confusing myself now. It does make sense. It still does make sense. I was about to go off on some incorrect tangent. I, th I think this is fine. Um, random note. I don't know if Sam E keeps the autoplay option on for torture. Um, it's an autoplay that one would reasonably keep on that just makes the torture irrelevant um, when your curses are out, so you don't have to bother choosing not to discard. But this is actually a kingdom where you often might want to voluntarily discard a torture, even if curses aren't on the table because um, it activates your village greens. So John's is saying there's an easy win here. I assume that's piling hostries and wine merchants. Um, it looks like Hakka is going for that, in fact. I would have thought that you rat the, um, the hostry first. Maybe it doesn't make a difference. Um, this doesn't look like a win. To me, just not one buy short. Oh, tower points. You're right. Um, nice, nicely done. All right, that is two one in Hakka's favor. I don't ever trust myself to reliably um. I start the score two two. Okay, <laughs> one day I will I will have some conception of what the score is. Um, okay, what do we got here? So we've got witch and IgG and no trashing. So the curses look pretty significant. You got Akuma Village Green, but no way to discard it that I can see. So Village Green is basically just a village here. Um, you got Storyteller and Ranger. Hmm. I think what happens here is you play some, some witches early, then eventually people start getting guardians down, and then you um, pivot towards IgG, because IgG bypasses guardian by virtue of technically not being an attack. Um, maybe you could justify skipping the witch entirely, but I think taking one witch is still worth it because either it's the best cursor or you made your opponent get two guardians, which itself is kind of an attack because guardian's not a particularly good card except for blocking things. Um, um, now, to be fair, um, Haka skipped village greens, but Sammy skipped torturers to get village greens, um, which is... Um, not necessarily a the better half of that trade off. Uh, anytime you you make something that absolute, it's nothing can block IGG. There's got to be exceptions. Um, I 
Yeah, well, Trader blocks it as long as you want silvers. Okay, let, let me see. We've got uh, cargo plot versus plot cargo. I like Haka's opening better. That was smart of him to start with the 4-3 instead of the 3-4. Um, so you get one extra draw from Sinister Plot. Uh, is Talisman strange? I don't know. I mean, I don't mind taking Village Greens and Rangers and Menageries. It does feel a little bit off. Like I would think priority number one here is to get cursing fast. I think the curses are gonna be pretty significant. And talisman doesn't really help you do that. You're really sad to have a $5 hand with talisman in it because then it's just functionally copper. Um, so Sam E has a really sad draw here. Um, He can salvage this by using Sinister Plot, which it looks like he did. Um, Hakka's hand is obviously just better though because he didn't have to use Plot. The problem, I guess, with um, playing Cargo Ship and setting aside Witch is your opponent knows exactly when the Witch is coming and can just buy the Guardian. Like a Sammy, I would buy Guardian here for five. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it pays for itself immediately, but it's like blocking one curse is enough to make it look good. Um, Hakka's plot is almost getting like too big. He doesn't have plus buy yet, and so having one huge turn isn't even super beneficial. Um, there might be a situation where he just needs to, to pop it out of desperation anyway. Like, here you might reasonably do it um, in hopes of finding the witch, which he doesn't, just because you know your opponent doesn't have a, a guardian to play this turn. Uh, Sammy is in an awkward position here because, oh, this is interesting. So Haka actually, I'm pretty sure that bottom card is actually Haka's witch. Um, Sammy has no way of knowing that though. If you just saw Haka draw everything that wasn't their witch and have six cards left in deck, you're pretty sure Haka has a witch in hand here, um, in which case you buy the guardian, um, which Sammy did. As it turns out, like if you knew what Haka's hand was and knew that witch happened to be the very bottom card, Obviously, just playing the cargo ship and buying a five cost card and setting it aside is just like way better than buying a guardian and setting nothing aside. Um, but Sam E was sure with like five six confidence Haka had the witch in hand, and so from his perspective, that that guardian made a lot of sense. Um, I think this is two rangers. I like the ranger because plus buy makes it less of an inconvenience to pick up guardian if needed. Um, I think you're still building. Um, in response to Jonathan's comment, I think that you're going to take IGGs, but the existence of Witch here means that it doesn't fully devolve into a rush. Because, like, for example, there's two curses gone. So even if they just decided, decided to, like, start pile driving IGGs right now, you would end up with the curses empty and still having, like, two to four IGGs left in the pile. And then it's not trivial to just, like, empty duchies or anything. The, the IGG rush normally works where you buy all the IGGs, and then IGGs and curses are both empty, so two piles are gone, and then you just rush down duchies before your opponent can get a real deck running. But um, 
in a scenario where the curses and IGGs are not running at the same rate, like here where witches have given out a few, then you have this issue where the curses run out before IGGs run out, and then there's never any incentive to just like buy the last two IGGs because you're adding coppers to your deck. Uh, and then it's not as significant to just empty duchies real fast. And so what might happen is you buy IGGs here to curse them, but then there's still not a, a second or third pile empty, and then you go back to building a bit. I honestly don't hate Menagerie. Um, I think I would buy the Forbes over it. Like, I wouldn't take Menagerie over Village Green or Ranger. But, like, Menagerie on three is pretty fine, especially if you had a Talisman in play. Um, you have some reasonable chance of activating it if it's in your starting hand. Your deck is full of junk, but it's full of, like, an assortment of junk. And, I mean, like, the payoff of Menagerie, if it does activate, is really high. Um, nice turn here from Sam E. Yeah, so Hakka bought two Guardians to block a curse. Um, chat seems to think that's unreasonable. It seems like a you know, plausibly a mistake. So you're adding two functional coppers. Guardian's basically like a copper. Um, to block a single curse. It's not clear that having two coppers in your deck is really better than a curse. Probably marginally in the abstract. But you're also passing up on buying um, some four-cost cards to do so. Um, two of them with Talisman. And I don't think having two coppers in the two coppers is better than having a curse and two four costs in your deck. Um, Miskin also has a good point that there's no, no need to even play the talisman. I'm not sure why you want two guardians instead of one. Maybe you want two guardians. Uh, maybe um, a free guardian in your deck is not that bad with curses still um, very high. Um, ooh, this witch is going to hit. That hurts a bit. Sammy looks to be very much winning here. Is this first to 3.5? I think this is first to 3.5. Are you asking by Village Greens? I think you could, it's 2-2 two, two, uh, and about to be 3-2 looks like. Psychomatic's order looks pretty reasonable to me. I assume you mean for Hakka's last buy. Um, as Sam E, I think you play Cargo Ship and then you buy two Village Greens and two Menageries. I don't think you have enough actions to support two Rangers and two Menageries, but maybe that. Could even be, I don't know, two Talismans and two Menageries? I'm definitely setting aside a Menagerie here. I'm, I'm pretty confident I want to do that. Sam E does not. Sam E decides to not even play the cargo ship. Um, that seems... Weird to me. That seems real weird to me. I don't like that. Like, just setting aside a draw card like Menagerie is already doing a good bit of what setting aside or playing the Village Green does for you. Um, you're just passing up on two free cards here. Like, a Menagerie in this hand would have very likely activated if you draw, like, anything but a state here, pretty much. I mean, you can also do it by not drawing the ranger in the first place. And setting aside a menagerie gets you more draw than playing Village Green does. Um, 
I don't know, Menagerie is just a good card. I like I like having them in deck. They they find ways to activate themselves pretty often, and then they pay off when they do. Even like even two silvers would have not been bad. You could like buy village green and two silvers and set aside the village green or something like that. The silvers are kind of draw with storyteller, um, but I, I think like village green and Menagerie look really nice there. And it doesn't matter too much. Sammy is definitely winning this game, or is definitely winning at the moment. Maybe some. Freak accident occurs. At this point, I think IGG might not even look super desirable, even when you can buy it. Like, IGG is kind of like a one point copper here, and that's. Not amazing. I think we might not see them get bought. Um, Menagerie now? Silver's also fine. Two cargo ships. Hmm. I think that's okay. He did just add a bunch of villages. Um, in any case, Hawkeye is just really behind. Really, really behind. Not even totally sure what Hawkeye is supposed to take here. I mean, you kind of don't want to lose the village green split that badly. Um, I like the idea of farm landing a state into village green. Nice way to take the last village green. Talisman wasn't going to matter anyway because there's only one of them. Functionally, just turning an estate into a farmland for free. Probably the best move in this situation. Um, Still, nonetheless, I think very behind. Honestly, Sam E could very much consider taking two more talismans here, because then you're exerting some serious pile pressure. Yeah, like, imagine you take... I don't know. How much money do they have? They're, they're still low on money, actually. Maybe it's a little bit early for that. I'm not sure. Um, if they had eight, like two talismans and two rangers would look very threatening. Um, but maybe you just need two silvers here. He's thinking about it. I'm not totally sure what I'd get. He's got a little bit of surplus actions. Uh, like he had enough to, to next turn a village green here. Obviously that's not required. Um, actually, is that true? Maybe that's not true. No, yeah, yeah, he's got um, essentially one more action, I think, than his deck currently suggests because he's next turning a village green each turn, which he doesn't need to do. Um, so you could afford to add like an action card here. Ranger is silver. That sounds fine to me.
I don't know, like, Talisman Silver also seems pretty fine, to be honest. Menagerie Silver, I like this too. Um, I really wouldn't mind moving towards, like, Storytellers as the main draw over Rangers. What's the lol about? Um, I don't know, that buy seemed fine to me. Setting aside Menagerie is setting aside draw. Hawkeye is just so dead in the water. But he's going to fight till the bitter end, it seems. I guess you buy silvers here. Could maybe consider talismans as well. I don't think Hakka has enough villages to support more rangers. Take the talismans, okay. I mean, Talisman's not particularly good at taking estates because it doesn't actually double them. Um, and I don't think he has enough buys to empty the estates. They do double village greens. I'm going to guess the logic of playing Storyteller first was to try to activate Menagerie. Not sure that it made sense, but that's my, my assumption. Why are you not drawing on? I don't understand. Why would you just voluntarily not play a, a draw card? I'm confused. Why is he? Why is he not playing this? <laughs> I don't understand. There's a village green in your hand that you could have drawn with for free. What am I missing? I don't get that. Like, unless you're just sure that like all nine of those cards are like really good cards you want to leave on top. I'm not sure what the downside is of just drawing one of them. Could be talismans and a storyteller. Um, he's got rangers down there and a village green for next turn. So I think setting aside a draw card isn't super necessary here. Just a province. Okay, I think he's a little bit overly worried about what Hakka's deck can do. Um, Hakka's deck does a, a fat load of nothing. And Talisman threatens to pile out. That's the reason for it. Yeah, 
Yeah, <laughs> Hawkeye's not one to resign early until um, made to. Like they they played out game one until very nearly the final turn. Okay, so discussion of Sam E having a win that requires four buys um, to buy two rangers and two guardians. It also requires 12 money. Um, just need to draw the last copper. Or we could not draw the last copper. Doesn't look like enough anymore, right? Well, the bottom card is a copper, so they're they're one short by their own doing. Is it not? Oh, it's wrong. Oh, I see. There's a copper in play. Last card's in the state. Never mind. Yeah, they're one short. Um, could they pile out curses? They're one by short, I think, of that, right? Um... Can you do Curses, Guardians, and uh, Farmland into Guardian? I don't think that works, does it? No, that's one by short of that as well. Um, oh well. Um, I mean, all, all the roads are leading to victory for Sam E. It's just at, at varying paces. All right, I would not be surprised if CME has a win this turn. He likes playing the Storyteller really early. I don't like that. Yeah, look, this is, that was definitely too early for Storyteller. The, the, yeah, the tricky part for a storyteller is you're converting your economy into draw. And so what's really important is to do that very precisely. You want to spend exactly as much money as is needed to draw to the end of your deck and not more. If you spend too little on storyteller, you fail to draw. But if you spend too much, you end up wasting too much of your money and you have less money than you could have. And so storyteller more than other draw cards, you don't just like draw as much as you can because you're cutting into your, your money at the end of the game. Looks like it turned out fine here. Um, but often what you want to do with the storyteller is just like calculate how much total draw do I have, how much draw do I need, and spend exactly that much. But it's much easier to do if you just play your other draw cards first and then hold off on the storyteller. Sam E threw away a bunch of money there, drawing more than necessary, but as it turned out, still had plenty of money to win. So I believe that's now 3-2 in Sam E's favor. So uh, Paka loses this one. Match goes to Sam E. What do we got here? Action, um, Ironmonger, Fishing Village, Coin of the Realm, Draw, Caravan, Ironmonger hitting a state. Actually, Ironmonger is not unreasonable draw here. Like if you just keep one estate around, then you could use like Ironmonger Secret Passage to just repetitively draw that estate over and over and over. Um, which actually kind of works. Um, I listed Caravan already. Caravan was the first thing I said. Um, but yeah, car Caravan, two Caravans is like one laboratory. Um, I mean, spending two $4 buys for a lab is exactly what you're doing for buying two Caravans. Um, so it's not like it's <laughs> clearly worse. The estate doesn't have to be discarded. You can choose whether to, dis to discard the estate or not with Ironmonger. Oh, 
Okay, but counterpoint. Caravans are boring. Ironmonger Secret Passage Estate is interesting. Uh, so therefore, you should draw with the latter. Uh, trashing is also develop here, which is kind of awkward because you have shelters. Develop is not great at trashing shelters. You'll get yourself some extra coppers. Um, I feel like these decks are going to be a little bit rickety. You're probably going to draw a bit, but like not reliably. Colonnade will probably be relevant. Unfortunately, this doesn't look like an amazing kingdom for Artificer, which is a shame because I think that's a really fun card. I don't think I like Ironmonger Tracker so much. I think Ironmonger um, Develop is better. Unless you... Did they have 5-2? I don't think they had... Neither had 5-2, did they? No. Um, the reason I don't like Ironmonger Tracker as much is... I think you like a tracker in your deck is pretty good, but you can get that by developing a shelter into a tracker. Um, and I don't think you want two trackers all that badly. It is not a silly dream. It is a uh, clearly optimal strategy here. But now they're just going to take caravans, like uninteresting players. The shame. The only good duration card is Haven. <laughs> it makes sense that uh, caravans are going to run really fast, though. It's a card you want, and then Colonnade encourages you to keep clicking more of cards you already wanted. Uh, Gatekeeper comes from Menagerie, the most recent expansion. Yeah, Highway is a really strong duration attack. Yeah, I think Shrine is probably worth it here. I think Defiled Shrine looks a lot better when you've got an extra buy to use. Because there, there's like two big drawbacks to Defiled Shrine. One is adding a curse to your deck, which is a stop card. The other is foregoing like a good buy for it. If I had one buy, then I'm not even sure I would buy Defiled Shrine there, because you're also passing up on like an Artificer or a Caravan or something. But if you got an extra buy anyway, it goes from missing out on a card and gaining a curse to just gaining a curse, which I think pretty substantially lowers the, the cost of Defiled Shrine. Please, I, I don't ever joke. Every comment I say is meant with 100% seriousness. Yeah, John knows what's up. Dominion is a no laughing matter. Oh, we were talking about duration cards. And I asserted that Haven is the only good duration card. And DZ brought up that Gatekeeper is a strong duration attack. Haven is great. I don't know what Jaunt is on. Um, <laughs> I guess the other good two cost duration card is your fourth bridge troll in your deck. It's a good thing I've been playing close attention to this game and can tell you exactly who's ahead right now. I assume it's Haka, he's got more points. That that tends to mean you're winning. Um so Haka is definitely the lead here.
The fourth. The fourth bridge troll. It's really a tragedy that Secret Passage has not been touched. You've got an Ironmonger in your deck. That first Secret Passage is basically a laboratory. No differences whatsoever between Secret Passage and laboratory here. It's nice that Hawk has a head because that means we'll get a game seven. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope that keeps up. <laughs> How thin are we? Let's see. Haka is not thin at all by virtue of having trashed nothing. Sam E has trashed a singular copper on turn nine. I thought opening develop looked pretty good here. At least that was my first thought. I mean, like, trashing self shelter is a little bit sad, but, like, if you hit Overgrown Estate, it draws you a card. You get to put a tracker on top. Um, may maybe that's too idealistic of me to even want to, to trash. Um, it does look like uh, Defiled Shrine is in the cards again for Haka. Well, obviously, you develop the Overgrown Estate into an Estate Estate, so you have a new target for it. And then it's on top of your deck where it needs to be. Yeah, so you get a copper for more economy. I'm not, I'm not seeing the issue here. No issues at all with this idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you trigger the shuffle? I think no. I think you leave the necropolis on top so that you can play the caravan without triggering a shuffle, and then you see wind's gift and cry. Ooh, I don't. I don't think I like that. Isn't this just like mostly junk? Really lucky. Really lucky boon there. Um, I, I guess if somehow you were to to know that sun's gift was on top, you're gonna trigger the shuffle anyway with your boon. Then they might as well do it. But. Yeah, that, that was an unnecessary risk from Haka. Now there's mostly junk sitting here. Could have been even worse without that boon. The issue, just to spell it more explicitly, was uh, Haka wanted to play the Caravan, which will draw you one card. But you want to play it so you get the plus one draw next turn anyway. And then they were choosing whether to discard the last card in their deck, the Necropolis. So if you leave the Necropolis on top, that caravan can draw the necropolis, um, and then you're fine. Uh, you don't trigger a shuffle. If you discard the necropolis and then play the caravan, your deck's empty, so you draw into a, a new shuffle, and that shuffle is full of terrible cards. Um, as it turns out, um, Haka got Sun's Gift from Tracker, which was A, going to trigger a shuffle anyway, because it was going to reveal four cards, and then B, lets you discard a bunch of cards, which at least makes the shuffle less bad. But not knowing that that boon was there, um, it's a real risk to trigger a shuffle full of terrible cards. Shanahan has a good point. Just right click on the boon pile and see what order they're coming up in. Yeah, every game with, with boons and hexes is basically a blind mode game. Uh, 
That's a really nice boon to get. You can get an Ironmonger and a Secret Passage. I said, and a Secret Passage. Look at this. Look look at this hand. They could have top decked an Ironmonger and a Secret Passage with their Overgrown Estate coming up. It's like a free laboratory that they passed up on. It's really a shame that they're passaging on it every time because uh, it's such a good card. I guess to be fair, if everyone knew how strong it was, then they would have to rename it to just Passage. Only people who are really in the know know how good SP is. Is Coin of the Realm even good for Sam E's deck? Um, like, I don't think they need the actions all that badly, do they? They're just like adding a copper. So to answer Iris, uh, Ironmonger's best case scenario here is gonna be revealing a victory card, because then you draw a card. And this kingdom is plenty of action, not a whole lot of terminals you wanna play anyway. You don't need the action effect. Um, you want the draw mostly. And it's kind of hard because your deck's not particularly full of victory cards to get your Ironmonger to hit a victory card. So you play Passage first and then put a victory card, say you're Overgrown Estate, two from the top of your deck, then play the Ironmonger, you draw uh, the Overgrown Estate, so plus one card, and then you play your next Secret Passage to put the Overgrown Estate back two from the top, and then play the next Ironmonger. And then you just keep drawing and redrawing the same Overgrown Estate over and over to get through your deck. I think I would keep that uh, hovel around, because it looks like they can afford province anyway and then trash it. Or actually, maybe not, not necessarily. You'd have to know that this last card in your deck is money. And I have not followed their deck well enough to say that. If that last card is like a copper or something, then you keep the, the, the hovel around. I assume Hakka is going to think for a second and figure out what that bottom card is. If it's a copper or something similar, then you keep Hovel and trash it. If it's not, then you discard Hovel so you can still afford province here. Jaunt says it's copper. I'm going to trust that that's true. Um, I have um, misplaced my trust, it seems. Have they discarded a copper yet? Oh, this is one way to do it, I guess. Just discard the caravan and not even bother counting your deck. So why would you top deck the province <laughs> as Haka? I don't really have an answer for that. Now, there is one theoretical very good reason to top deck province, which is if you've got Ironmongers and Secret Passages in your deck, you want a victory card on top to kick off your turn. The, the real problem here is not the top decking of the provinces so much as the lack of secret passages when you think about it. <laughs> There's not really a third pile that's likely to run down here, I don't think. Like, going out of your way to empty five artificers or eight estates, it's probably just a little bit too much work for Hakka. Um, so I think what's going to happen is we're going to end up on a province ending with Hakka just having enough of a points lead to win. It actually, it really is um, a crime against humanity that Secret Passage is still at 10 here.
Ah, the passage of time. Good time for it. All right, I'm now rooting for for Sammy. I no longer want a seventh game. I want I want Sammy to win this game. Sammy's got his head on straight here. Discard that, I would assume. Probably doesn't matter too much. Either way, you can buy Province and Trash Curse. This lets you top deck Province, though. <laughs> or Trash or Copper. You can, still, you can still top deck the Province. And he does! Wow, look at this beautiful hand Haka set up for himself. <laughs> Did he just realize he was top decking province every time? <laughs> I'm not really following what Rock I was doing right now. Um, that was actually really good. Um, so I believe the way the shuffles work. Um, here is if you make a decision that alters like the amount of cards in your shuffle then the game will generate essentially a brand new shuffle if you make a decision that is changes which card is going into your shuffle it'll be the same so for example if you bought a province and then you hit undo and bought a gold instead you would have the exact same shuffle triggered from the same seed just with a gold where the province would have been but if you undo the province buy to buy like two silvers you'll get a brand new shuffle entirely the game will just generate a new shuffle. Um, and so what happened there was Haka bought a province and top decked it and then undid that to untop deck it. And I think that's probably a fair undo. I don't think it was really based on the hand that he saw. That being said, what ended up happening was he had a horrible hand uh, drawn and then undoing and just generating a brand new shuffle that didn't have a province in it actually inadvertently gave him a, a pretty substantially better hand. Um, just by luck of the draw. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I did use a pretty questionable example there. To be fair, DZ has a point. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm imagining you would ever buy gold. Um, if you if you undid the province buy and bought curse instead, you would generate the same shuffle where the curse is there instead of the province. Ooh, secret passage. Sam E knows what's up. Oh, and look at this other combo. You got the, the old Passage Will O Wisp Necropolis combo. Um, same thing as the Ironmonger Estate combo, except you put the Necropolis 2 from the top and then play uh, Will O Wisp to draw your Necropolis back. Oh my god, did he really? Did I? Even... Oh my goodness, Sammy, say it isn't so. What's wrong with nails on a chalkboard? Can we you know, choose our analogies a little bit more wisely? Haka buying another curse. Oh, so many options. You've got the Will-O-Wisp Necropolis option. you got Tracker Will-O-Wisp. You've got Province Ironmonger. Goes for the Province Ironmonger. I think that's actually worse. Um, I think Will-O-Wisp Necropolis is better than Province Ironmonger because best case scenario for your Will-O-Wisp is it, it either just hits Necropolis or it doesn't. Whereas if you if you do that and then leave the Ironmonger, the Ironmonger could potentially reveal like a copper for one extra coin. If you use the necrop if you use the secret passage to set up the um the ironmonger, I think your will o wisp is less likely to do anything. It's all a bit marginal, but I think I would rather set up the will o wisp and then have my ironmonger draw into the void than the reverse cuz ironmonger I think in the abstract is a better card than will o wisp. It's not totally clear, but um I think I think that's true.
So basically, you, you get one guaranteed draw. You can either use your Will-O-Wisp or your Ironmonger as a lab. And then the one you don't use as a lab is just going to do its thing without any certainty of what it hits. And I would rather play an Ironmonger into a random card than a Will-O-Wisp into a random card, I think. Because it's more likely to have some upside to it. Not sure I explained that very well. But basically, uh, the Secret Passage sets up one of these two cards. And whichever card you set up is functional laboratory for that play. Just draws one extra card. Uh, and then that leaves the other one to be played afterwards. And that, that new card you're not going to be able to set up with your Secret Passage because you've already used both of yours. And so it's just a question of um, play um, Will-O-Wisp for guaranteed draw and Ironmonger randomly or Ironmonger for guaranteed draw and Will-O-Wisp randomly. And I think Ironmongering to see a random card is more likely to get you a benefit because it could hit a province and draw or a coin and get you a coin. Whereas Will-O-Wisp's only success case is hitting a, like a two-cost card and drawing. Sammy's actually kind of catching up here. Um, not, not quite enough, but made it a close one in the end. I will note, Haka had a huge lead for a while there. And then some passages were bought, and the game ended up being very close. Uh, and so I think that the takeaway from this game is that Secret Passage was the key card of this kingdom. All right, so we got game seven. I believe the winner of this... The, the point was it was going from very lost to less lost, which suggests Passage was an improvement. Um... Yeah, so this is the final game. Um, winner wins. If it's a tie, Haka wins because he's player two. Um, what do we got here? We got draw was steward, hunting lodge. That's kind of it. Um, trashing with rat catcher, steward, um, or transmogrify. Um, No plus buy, so Hagler will be pretty significant here. Oh, so it seems like the the, the players are incorrect in, in assuming what the rules are. Um, I, I assume a symbol me knows better by virtue of having orchestrated the tournament. Yeah, I think the most important cards here are going to be, like, Haggler, more Haggler, and gain a bunch of stuff. Is 5-2 that bad? Really? I don't know, like Haggler or Ratcatcher? I mean, Transmogrify Stewart does seem great. I'm not, not going to deny that. But, like, Haggler and Ratcatcher are both good cards. I don't think rat catcher is draw. That's not draw. Your fortress goes from being in your hand to still being in your hand. I'm not, I'm not understanding how that increases your hand size, uh, trashing a fortress with a rat catcher. <laughs> but rat catcher trashing fortress is also not draw. It just turns the rats into a cantrip. <laughs> Like, if you played rats and trashed a card from your hand, you would reduce your hand size by one. If you if you uh, played rats to trash fortress, your hand size would just stay the same. All right, so we, we see Steward, Transmogrify, Hagler, Rat Catcher. Those did seem like the only two possible openings given their respective splits. Sam E. Seen sees the uh, Transmogrify turn three, which is excellent. Um, a lot better to see Duration and um, Reserve cards turn three than turn four. Um, with some exceptions. Because it means that you get to play the card turn three, call it turn four, and it goes back into the shuffle. Whereas if you play it turn four, it misses the shuffle. Contrast with a standard card like Steward, where even if you see it turn four, which he does, it um, still goes back into the shuffle in time. So like Sammy's turn three, turn four, excellent here. Uh, Haka, 
has a perfectly fine turn three and turn four. Um, doesn't get to see the rat catcher turn three, which is slightly worse. <laughs> so Sam E is already getting to do um, Transmogrify Fortress stuff, which is pretty nice. Oh yeah, wow, this is just beautiful shuffles from Sam E. I think you play this for coins and get a Haggler next. It's like the thing your deck needs. Yeah, um, I think that was more important than trashing there. Um, and then you'll be looking to trash pretty soon. Yeah, Sam Sammy's just gonna, I think, ride these shuffles to the uh, to the victory. Like he's got the lead, and with some transmogrifies, I think your deck will be reliable enough to uh, not be very likely to dud. I think next uh, turn for Sammy will probably be a second hunting lodge and a fortress. Um, could also consider. Uh, Maybe a second Hackler in a Fortress. Or not 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 Fortress, I mean second Transmogrify. Um, I think Hunting Lodge T-Mog could also be Hackler T-Mog. Oh, he does take a second Fortress. I don't think you need a second fortress yet. I mean, you you still have the estate, and even Stewart is transmogrify target if you don't see your fortress. Um, I think I would have just taken the second transmogrify there. Um, Hawkeye still has four coppers, which is worse than what Sambi has. So Sammy have to T-Mog this steward into Fortress to save the turn, which does make that Transmogrify look extra bad, because now you've got like way too many Fortry and uh, not enough T-Mogs. I think they're both being a little bit overly cautious in terms of Fortresses. Like obviously having multiple Fortresses is good because you want to have one on top for Transmogrify targets, but you also want to have Transmogrifies to use on the Fortresses that are then on top of your deck. What is that bottom card? Is it not a copper? I guess it's not, is it? I really want a bunch of uh, transmogrifies here. Um, Miss Gun asks, why not play another fortress? Because he didn't want to draw the last card. Fortress on top of deck is a good place for it. And if you're just going to buy a five cost anyway, you don't need eight money. Yeah, trashing the estate's probably worth it. Like, this is a single buy kingdom, and often in a lot of single buy kingdoms, you want to keep one estate around, because it's a tiebreaker if you end up getting the provinces at the same time, where you each buy four provinces and you win on the estate. But uh, transmogrify into fortresses, or transmogrify fortresses into duchies, I guess is the way to phrase that, um, is plenty of extra points. I, I don't think it needed to be province time there, like, I do want to gain lots of transmogrifies because that threatens to get a ton of points in the final turn. If my opponent already had Providence, then I would consider it, but I don't think Providence is at all mandatory there. Fleet also seems kind of significant here. Mm 
<laughs> so what's the transmogrify split now? Two two looks like. Uh, I think we trash the estate here and by province. And taking uh, some number of, I don't know, like hunting lodge, two transmogrifies. Yeah, the thing John said. I can see this ending on piles. Transmogrify Fortress Hagler. Those being the piles that end, not my suggestion for what Sammy gains here. Um, surely a second hunting lodge. I guess maybe it's not that assuredly, because like you can transmogrify a fortress into hunting lodge if you don't find your hunting lodge. So uh, you you could actually reasonably here just take three more T-Mox. I think would actually be a, a very nice option, and then you gain your second hunting lodge rather than buying it. Um, yeah, Fortress Missing is actually not the end of the world if you have a bunch of transmogrifies. It just means you waste one transmogrify transmogrifying something else in a fortress and then use your rest of your transmogrifies on that card. Um, I, I just think I really want to be taking the transmogrifies more aggressively than they are. I think Tmog is better than Hagler here, even. You could transmogrify a fortress into a copper and a duchy. That's like counting. Sam can maybe win even without lowering. Is that true? So you call two transmogrifies to gain two hagglers, then you play six hagglers, and then you buy a province, and then you empty haggler four transmogrifies fortress. I think that checks out. Can, do you have enough actions to play all that? Or am I counting after? I assume when you said that Haka had not taken the transmogrify yet. Because it does look now like Sam E has the, the possibility to win here. You lower two Hagglers by province, take Haggler Fortress four transmogrifies. He has four hours, right? What am I missing? Yeah, you buy the province. So you lower hackers by two, and then you buy province, and then you take six cards. I think it's probably worth going for here. You, you'll have two fortresses in your hand. You can play two fortresses, play two hagglers, and uh, play hunting lodge, and you're, I think, pretty close to guaranteed to draw all of it, right?
Trashing Steward, I think, makes sense. That card just... That, that doesn't mean they don't see it. Um, it could be like they don't want to accidentally run into their steward when they redraw with Hunting Lodge. Is that true? Why, why is that true? How does Trashing Steward affect anything? You have enough money with six Hagglers. He trashed it with Ratcatcher, not Necropolis. Why did I say Necropolis? <laughs> well, he, it is true they did not trash it with Necropolis, but what I meant to say was he trashed it with the Rat Catcher, not Transmogrify. Um, <laughs> so hypothetically, let's say he doesn't go for the, the Hagler pile out. What if he just takes two duchies and then buys province? Haka can't beat that, but could potentially try to tie that. Actually, maybe Haka could beat that. Like, what if Haka buys fleet and then wins on the fleet turn. No, that doesn't make sense because Haka couldn't pile out and also buy fleet. Um, look like he's going for it. And just enough actions. All right, that's the match. Sammy is the C Division champion. Nice close 4-3. Good games.